In this video, Phil's going to cover how to perform the equivalent of if error in Power Query, including how to check for errors when loading data or carrying out calculations, and how to handle errors and prevent your Power Query transformations from failing. Take it away, Phil. In Excel, we can use if error to trap errors in our calculations, and we can then tell Excel to produce a different result instead of that error. Power Query doesn't have if error, but it does have a way of checking for errors and replacing the errors with a default answer, and it's called try otherwise. In this video, I'll show you how to use try otherwise to handle errors when loading data, how to handle errors in your transformations, and how to handle errors when your query can't locate a data source. I've already generated a couple of errors in this table, and of course I can obviously see them, and I could fix them before loading into Power Query. But when using Power Query, this isn't always the situation. Your query will be loading data without knowing what it's going to be getting, so it needs to know how to handle these errors. Let's load this data into Power Query. And I'll just call the query errors from sheet. Straight away, you can see the errors are in this end column. And of course, you could use remove errors, but that will remove the rows, and I don't want that. Or you could use replace errors, but this doesn't give me any idea what caused the error and that's what I want to see. So let's just get rid of that step as well. So I'm going to add a column and in here, I'm just going to use try. Now on its own, you can use try. You don't need otherwise and I'll show you what happens. So what I want to do is try the values in the end column. And this results in a column of records. Now, if we look in the records, just drag this up, make it a bit easier to see. The record contains two values. The first is has error, which is a Boolean that indicates whether there's a, an error or not in this row. And if you have an error, there'll be another record which contains further values. I'll look at that in a second. But if we look at a row where there is no error, you can see that has error is false. And then the second field in the record is the actual value, number three here. So let's go back to the first row where we have an error. If I click on the record itself, just have a look at it, you can see here in the error field that there is another record and that contains three more fields. First one is the reason for the error, that's data format error. That's a power query uh, error message. The message itself, now that's the thing I want, that's the error message from Excel. And some errors have further details, but in this case we don't have one. So I'll just remove that and I'm just going to make the window full screen. Now, if I expand this error column, click OK. So we get the values that I just showed you in the records. And then if I expand these error records again, then we can see the Power Query error message and the actual error message from Excel. And this is the error message that I'm interested in. So let me show you how to do this a little bit less messily. I'll duplicate this query and I'll just rename it. Get rid of these steps here. Now I'll keep the first custom column I added, which is using try to check the value in the end column. Now remember, if we look in this record, We've got a Boolean value has error that tells us whether there's an error or not in the end column. And I can use this to decide what to do next. So let's just add a column. I'll call it error or value. And I'm going to use if then else. So if in the custom column, the field in the record called has error, if that's true, now I don't need to do a test here, it's just an implicit um, Boolean test. So if custom has error is true, then I want to see the error message from Excel. So to access that, again, it's the custom column. And remember, there's a record called error, if there is an error. And inside that record, I want the message. If there is not an error, then I just want the value. So that's from the custom column, and I want value, the field called value in the record. Click OK, and I now have either the error message from Excel or the value. So that's accessing the error message from the worksheet. 
Let's now look at checking for an error during transformations or calculations and replacing that error with a default value. In this scenario, I don't really care what the error is or what caused it. I just want to make sure that my calculations don't fail. So let's duplicate this query again, rename this error in calculation or errors in calculation. Add a custom column, call it result. And it's just start divided by end. No surprises here. Where we've got an error in the end column, we get an error in the result column. To fix that, let's open up the step again. And we're going to use try. So we're saying try to divide start by end. If you get an error, so otherwise, use the value zero. So try to divide start by end. If that works out okay, great. If you get an error, give me the value zero. And you can see where we've got an error in the end column, we've now got a zero in the result column. In the last example, I'm going to load some data from a worksheet. So a new query from file, get it out of a workbook. And we're going to go to the F drive, data, and here's the file I want. And we're just going to load this table, table one. Okay, all good, nice and easy, no problems. But let's just go back and look at the source step. So we're loading it from the F drive in a folder called data and then the file name. Now let's cause this to error. I'm gonna open up the advanced editor and we'll just change this. So we're trying to load it off, say the X drive. Now it's gonna throw an error because I don't have an X drive. To fix that, let's go back into the advanced editor and I'm going to use try. So try to load that file off the X drive. And if that doesn't work, then load this backup file. And I'm just going to change this so it loads it from the correct drive here. Now, obviously, I'm making all of this up, but it's just for illustration purposes. So we're saying load my source file from X data. Otherwise, if you can't find that, load it from F data. Click on done and my file loads OK. So there's three examples of how you can use try otherwise in Power Query to deal with errors. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.